Hey world, this is it, the most driven podcast on the radio. Welcome to The Driven, a podcast brought to you by the kick-ass nutrition science team at M-Drive. M-Drive is all you need and all you need to know in the world of more energy, more focus, more stamina, and more drive. I'm your host, Rick Barroff, longtime ultra-endurance athlete and M-Drive ambassador. We're going to talk it up with a wealth of amazing, passionate, dedicated, and driven guys in all walks of life. So get ready to be motivated and inspired. It's The Driven Podcast. On this episode of The Driven, we're talking with the king, the king of endurance, that is, Marshall Ulrich. Now barreling into his eighth decade here on Earth, Marshall's not slowing down because of his age. In his 30s, 40s, and 50s, he rewrote the Ultra Endurance record book with a number of feats that will boggle the mind. He's finished and won the incredible Badwater Ultra Marathon across Death Valley more times than anyone. He's climbed the seven summits. He's run 3,000 plus miles across America, coast to coast. He's won a number of 24-hour running races along the way, and he's one of the few people to finish every single Eco Challenge adventure race, aka the world's toughest race. Yes, several magazines have literally called him the king of endurance. But he didn't start running until his 30s after a tragedy befell him and the doctor said his health was on the ropes. So he channeled his stress, his anguish, his pain into ultra running, pushing his mind and his body to places most of us can only imagine. He'll talk about the mentality it takes to train for and compete in these Herculean events, as well as his mantra of just keep driving. So get ready, we're jumping in with one of the most driven men on the planet, Marshall Ulrich. Three, two, one. Hey guys, Rick Barrett here, Driven Podcast again, featuring Marshall Ulrich, the king of endurance. Marshall, I've got to see you doing some uh, amazing exploits out there around the, the world and across the country. Tell me um, what you're up to. Kind what of- am I up to? Just okay. kind of hanging around, running with my buddies a little bit and um, nice. trying to put, put together, you know, a few things uh, that... Um, are sort of an extension of uh, my past and my future. And I live here in Evergreen, Colorado. So, you know, we're up at uh, about 7,400 feet. So it kind of is advantageous to be there. I was way up in Idaho Springs at 10,400 feet. And, you know, that was good for training. But hey, what I've discovered is the older you get that uh, you need that uh, recovery oxygen. So we're down here at a lofty 7,400 and that helps with with training. So I am an independence baby. I was born July 4th, 1951. So if you do the math, that makes me, you know, coming up on 71. I'm 70 right now. So that's about the only exceptional thing about me is that I was born on that day. All right. Yes, yes. The, the only thing, except for the um, 30 plus crossings of Death Valley, a uh, number of uh, podium finishes and several ultra marathons, the uh, longest um, consecutive streak of uh, eco challenge adventure races. We can go on and on. Let, let's start at the end and go back to the beginning then. So, you know, you have a, a rundown Route 66 that you're, that you're uh, uh, curating or, or race directing. Let's 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 talk about that and then we'll go all the way back. Yeah, so um, Heather and I actually walked that uh, section of Route 66 in Arizona, and it's 158 miles. Now we shortened the race. It's only 140 miles, so I don't mean to break your heart, Rick. Um, You know, if we get you to come out and do it, uh, you're going to have 18 miles less to do. Mm. So it's 140 miles, but Heather and I went out and walked that's exactly almost exactly six marathons in six days to kind of get a feel for it and we did this for alzheimer's my buddy mark macy who is affected by it and we discovered that it is this little jewel in the rough that needs to be polished and so we decided to go ahead and do a race out there such a wealth of history you know we had back in 1928, uh, there was the Bunyan Derbies, and there were these fellows who ran from, I believe it was um, Los Angeles to New York City, and it was a state race, and these guys were from all over the world, and back in 1928, the purse was $25,000, which was a huge, huge chunk of money. Wow. So anyhow, the uh, 
the race is going to follow in the footsteps of them as well as, uh, you know, there's lots of things like, you know, the little movie cars, the cartoon movie that was based on, you know, sections of that. Um, and, um, the grapes of wrath, the Okies, you know, came along that, uh, Route 66 and right at the Colorado Bridge is where a lot of it was based, a lot of the story going into California. So it's just steeped in history. And so people will be running in the footsteps of, of all that history that is so, so rich. So, OK, let's get back to the beginning. So you weren't always uh, an ultra runner. It, it, it actually took um, uh, kind of a, you know, an, an unfortunate uh, situation in your life, not necessarily an epiphany. But um, what started you on your quest to uh, just continue to push yourself so hard? Yeah. So uh, when I was 28 years old uh, and I, you know, I was married, uh, my wife was 28 years old. Then she uh, got cancer and um while she was going through chemotherapy and, you know, all the other stuff that people go through, it uh, was very stressful. And, you know, I had high blood pressure at the time and uh, the doctor was telling me, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to go on medication. You know, maybe you should try exercise. And so I started running and uh, at 30 years old, she passed away. This was a couple of years later and I was very troubled and I didn't really know. I didn't have a good support system. There wasn't hospice you know, back then there wasn't any of that stuff. Uh, and so I was just kind of wandering around in the dark, uh, so to speak. And I think uh, the reason I gravitated toward running is that it helped me reflect on my life and, you know, what I wanted it to be and what, what it was about and to deal with, you know, just all the pain of losing my wife. And, um, this was, this was about a, at least a 20 year odyssey where um, I feel like, you know, I was lost and sucked into that black hole. And the only way that I knew how to fill it was by running and running and running. And so I accomplished a lot, but uh, it was like I was on a treadmill going nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, which kind of fast forward brings us to, you know, I met Heather. Uh, gosh, this has been like almost 20 years ago. And she pulled me out of that void and took me under wing and uh, patched me up and propped me up and, you know, became my biggest support system. And so, you know, I credit uh, her to sort of saving me and pulling me out of that deep, dark hole. Yeah, yeah. wonderful to uh, to have have her in your life. And I'm happy to, to know her. And I know that she's, uh, you know, whether, whether she's literally taking the steps with you or not, she's alongside you is, is any, all of the time. So for people that don't actually know, the Badwater is an actual running race uh, across Death Valley from the actual lowest point in the U.S. I used to think it was the world, but it's just the U.S. And essentially ascending um, you know, eight plus thousand feet if you're just going to the portal, it's called, where you can start the trail to the top or all the way up to 14,000 plus feet. But if you have to run it, it's 140 plus miles. Yeah. And traditionally that's that's done in the summer, of course. So, you know, the official race I've done 20 times, then I've went out there another, um, you know, 10 times and uh, done multiples um, as well as a solo. And so you've literally crossed Death Valley 30 times, well, at least on a particular route. It's actually 31 times that I've been across, mm -hmm. but one is a winter crossing. Oh, yeah. So I wanted oh, to be yeah. the first person to go ahead and do the Badwater, you know, route. Yeah. And within that calendar year, gotcha. not the calendar year, but uh, within a year, yeah. um, I did a winter ascent a crossing. So, you know, crossing Death Valley isn't much. Yeah. In the winter, I did it in February, but uh, then you get uh, up to Mount Whitney and it's kind of the opposite. It gets mm -hmm. cold as hell. And we yeah. went up the Mountaineers route and it was a full on expedition. Sure. It took us about two and a half days to get up that mountain. Uh, I call it fire and ice, maybe 1999, 98. I had one of my crew members, a guy that was crewing for me, and he says, you know, I wonder if a person could actually drag all his water and everything that he needed be totally self-contained, totally self-sufficient. And uh, this guy was an engineer. And so he put a pencil to it as we were running along doing this, this race, the Badwater race. And by the time we finished, he came to the conclusion that it couldn't be done. So I thought, well, you know, that sounds like a nice little challenge. So um, 
A year later, what I did is I packed up a cooler, the 22 gallon cooler and filled it with water and ice. And then I put a backpack on it and everything I needed to eat. And so the thing weighed about 227 pounds. And so I started out from uh, the lowest point, which is bad water, minus 282 feet. And um, I can't remember how long it took me, let's say 80 hours, give or take. Uh, and popped up on the top of Whitney, and uh, I had succeeded, and I still had two gallons reserve of water left. So, you know, it worked out just fine. Wow. Now, wow. since then, okay, yeah, since yeah. then, there's been probably, I would say, five or six people who have, you know, broken that record because, yeah. you know, I had that big old hog that I was pulling behind <laughs> me, and some of them have lightened it up to about 12 to 14 gallons. So, uh, mm. they're, uh, you know, chipping away at that, that record is, as uh, you know, some of the other records that I held and, you know, that just absolutely delights me. So yeah, right. um, it's funny that, you know, people, some of the things that I thought were sort of unusual and never even thought about being a record, all of a sudden people say, Oh, I need to break Marshall's record. And I never intended to go out there and set records. I just wanted to show people that they could do more than they thought they could. So it's kind of interesting how it just sort of uh, gets out of hand. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, so another thing that, that you uh, accomplished um, despite long odds and, and crazy circumstances was an actual uh, transcontinental run where you uh, started on the West coast of the United States and um, ended up on the East coast and wrote a book about it. Well, yeah. And that's, that's where I'm going to drag you into the fold because mm -hmm. uh you know, there was a, a cinema photographer that was out there and she was taking some really sort of artsy photos and video of me. And um, for some reason, she got pulled away from the project and enter Rick. And so I, I don't know, where was that? About the third or fourth day in? Yeah, or something? somewhere just across in Nevada. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, crossing into Nevada. And so, you know, here comes Rick, my old buddy that I'd known for years and years. Uh, so... I was delighted to see that and, you know, just a familiar face because there was a lot of uh, shit that was hitting the fan out there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you can't help but have that happen. But Mark Macy, I just got off the trail with him and we went for a run today and we were talking about you, Rick. I was saying, hey, you know, I've got a interview with Rick and we were talking about he was saying, man, it was so cool. And he even though he's got Alzheimer's, he has those old memories. And he said, I remember, Rick, you know, we were running down Times Square, you know, through Times Square down, what is it, Broadway or whatever that is. Uh, it's the main street there. Yeah. yeah. And he said, then Rick sliding across hoods, you know, with his camera and running alongside. He says, Jesus, that was the most fun I think I've ever had. So oh, yeah, yeah, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, it was all good. It was so. fun. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, I love running down, you know, just being part of that, you know, running and, and this, you know, again, I got to see what you're talking about with your lovely wife up close and personal. She was there literally every step of the way and um, kind of took care of all of us. I, 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 I would say she was the heart and soul of that. So um, what just keeps you motivated? Just just not wanting to sit around these days or anything else driving you? I know you've done a lot of work for charities and whatnot. Yeah, you know, some of it is, you know, the charity work and, you know, we have identified the Alzheimer's Association to raise money for the last couple of years. And mainly because of Mark Macy, who has done, you know, eight of the eco challenges with me. So, you know, that was fantastic. And that's always motivating. And we were, you know, able to do that last um, eco challenge. I guess that was, gosh, we're coming up on three years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the world's toughest race. So that was fantastic. And having Mark out there with, you know, even though he was on another team, it was just, uh, you know, it was just so inspirational to so many people. So, yeah. uh, but that's what motivates me, that type of thing. And then I like to target something each year and it always used to be like bad water crossing. And, you know, it always, <clears throat> I've always, you know, done the full Monty, which is 146 miles instead of the abbreviated version, which is 135. Yeah. So I kind of pride myself in that. And then, you know, I think about, um, you know, people reach out to me occasionally and believe it or not, they say that, you know, I'm inspirational or what mm -hmm. I do is inspirational. I'm not inspirational, but maybe, you know, some of the things I do, I don't know. 
It is. Anyway, now, whatever it is. Yeah, I'll link to your books. I'll link to your books. You're your very inspiration. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, people have been very kind, and I like to think that um, on some level, I just getting older. Uh, now it's like <laughs> here's this old guy that's still out there doing stuff. So I think a lot of that is is motivating because I feel like people are kind of watching what I do and. Um, I want to try and set a good example as good as I can. Um, and, you know, the message is, you know, just don't stop. I mean, keep going as long as you can. And I know we all have our challenges. You know, it could be physical, mental or whatever it is, but uh, do as much as you can, you know, yeah, stay yeah. as active as you can. When you're training for all these things, you were, uh, um, and you might not have been like a, you know, a technical process person, but, you know, tell me about, I mean, do you enjoy the process or was it just, you know, again, a place to go bury yourself or, or, you know, maybe you can just talk about a little bit of the process that, that, you know, the mindset you need to get into when you're preparing, let's say for bad water or crossing in the United States. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons, the other reason that I really got into it is I I wanted to try and be as good as I can because I wanted it to uh, potentially foot the bill for a lot of the travel that I did. And I wanted to travel the the world. And, you know, that was sort of the ticket into it. Um, So and then it was all about leveraging, um, you know, not myself so much, but it included leveraging the team. So we had Sponsors at times we'd have uh, Dupont sponsor us for a couple of years, and they've they sponsored us for not only the Eco Challenge but the Raid Gal Galois, which is kind of you know the original Eco mm-hmm. Challenge, and um, kind of backing up just a little bit. I you know the training would sort of allow me to get off the beaten path, you know, figuratively and literally. So I'd I'd be up there just you know, running in the mountains. And um, it was a lot of alone time. And I think it was, you know, a long healing process. There's some wounds that take longer than others to heal. And it was just taking me a long time. So yeah, there was that, uh, the training. I don't know if I, I can say that I enjoyed it totally, Mm -hmm. but I enjoyed you know, some of the challenges, you know, I always wanted to see if I could go further, faster, you know, whatever. And I, th- I think that was part of what I reveled in. Um, and, you know, now it's, it's over the years, it's sort of shifted gears because, you know, I didn't want it to be all about running. You know, of course, uh, the adventure racing entered the picture about 1995, and I was able to do those and then I think uh, I was always intrigued ever since I was a little boy of five years old about mountaineering. And so I didn't want to be uh, just, um, I wanted to be a little bit more multidimensional than just the running, just, uh, and, and that's where the adventure racing fit in. And then, you know, climbing mountains. And so I was able to, you know, segue into doing the seven summits and it was kind of interesting, you know, we're talking about Heather and when she met me, I hadn't done any of the seven summits. This was back in, I don't know, 2001 or something like that. And all of a sudden, you know, I met this wonderful woman and I said, Hey, I got to tell you, I've got this, this thing where, you know, (laughs) you know, it could be a deal breaker because Uh (laughs) you're either in it or, or, you know, or not or whatever. And I loved her to death and I'm just crossing my fingers and you know, she knew that I wanted to, you know, at least summit Everest and maybe do the seven summits. And and so, uh, you know, she just took it right in stride as she does everything else. Right so, um, yeah, I think a lot of the motivation is to keeping it fresh and, and, and yeah. instead of just running in the running, you know, everything just sort of fell out of that. Because if you train for running, you can do just about anything. You can do long bicycle races. You can you know, do eco challenges, it all, you know, kind of crosses over. So, you know, it was a wonderful thing. And I was very privileged to uh, be able to be in the right place at the right time to mm-hmm. allow things to happen. What, what Was there a, a point when you're like, where you went from, okay, I'm just doing this obviously to clear my head to like, hey, I realize I'm pretty good at this, or I, I think I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, so I, th- I, th- I think that happened, you know, in the early 80s, where I was running some marathons, and it kind of goes along with just kind of stretching the limits and stuff. And then I read an article about Western states, and hey, here's this, 
this hundred uh, miler that's out there. And so I, I thought, well, you know, I said, I should go give give that a go. And I really didn't have a support system or anything, but it was just, you know, it was just very compelling. And there was almost a curiosity there. But, you know, having said that, and I think what you're getting at is, you know, you just don't go from like a 5K or a 10K into, you know, doing marathons. Of course, you can, but, you know, it may not uh, feel good um, if you train a little bit for it. And you have to literally, and I, I almost hate to say this, dedicate your life because, you know, certainly you should be dedicating your life to to family and other things, but I may have gone a little bit overboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it takes a lot of, of dedication. I'd go out, I'd, I'd uh, trying to you know hold my family together and spend uh, family time. That was that was a priority of mine. So you know, a lot of it was getting up at five thirty, six o'clock, and by the time I was in the door after I'd run ten or twelve miles, um, everybody was just waking up. So I tried not to interrupt things as much as possible. And then as far as hundred milers, when, you know, I finally, you know, I stepped into fifties and then started doing hundreds a couple of years later, say, you know, back in 86 or somewhere back in there, Hey, you know, I was, I was dabbling around with the, uh, you know, Pikes Peak and, you know, stuff like that. So I was kind of bumping up on the longer distances, but uh, there was a comfort level that I found within the hundred mile venues. And, yeah. you know, one of my specialties, Heather and I, we were kind of cleaning. We've got a, I've got a trophy case that's up at our other house, and I just left everything up there, and I kind of forgotten about some of the stuff that I did. And she said, "What's all this twenty-four hour stuff?" And I said, "That was kind of my belly wig, you know, back then. I could, you know, knock out 130, 140 miles in twenty-four hours, and that was kind of my specialty." And yeah. I'm looking at it and I said, God, no, that was really stupid because I mean, trails are so much more enjoyable than running yeah. around a track or something. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but it does, it takes a lot of dedication. Uh, you know, some people will say to me, oh gosh, you know, uh, can you, what do you think about doing this or doing that? And, you know, I say to them, you know, where are you coming from and what have you done and stuff? Because they don't realize, I think that it takes a long process for me, it did at least where, you know, it was five or 10 years of building up to this and then this, yeah. and it was just like taking these baby steps. Mm. You know? So this whole time, you're not just some, you know, professional athlete making millions and, you know, sipping crystal on your yacht. You've, you've, you're a very hardworking guy who's also raised three kids. You know, at one time they're, they're all older now. They're 30 and up to uh, Elaine's like 44, 45 years old now. Uh, but uh, there, there came a time where they actually resented me for being away from home, uh, even though I tried to, when I was running 100 milers, I'd leave on a Friday, come back on a Monday, and I'm sitting there at work, and nobody even knew, you know, what I'd done that weekend. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I tried to keep the business going, and the business was, uh, you know, I was a used cow dealer. I picked up dead stock out and you know, Northeast Colorado. And I did that for years and years, still have the business as well as, um, you know, farms. And I still go out and work, you know, on the for- farm. I don't work hard. <laughs> <laughs> you used to, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. I just enjoy it. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I love I mean, that stuff and I love the people. It's just like ultra running. It's a group of people that are very supportive of each other. Okay. we got a couple of questions that, uh, you know, we're asking uh, all of our guests here. What is one of the accomplishments that you're most proud of? Um, you know, of course it's my kids, uh, you know, that would be the first thing, you know, in, in life. And, um, I think my, another one of my biggest accomplishments is, is recognizing that Heather was the one that I wanted to marry and actually following through with it. All right. Hey, that counts. That's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's that. And, um, yeah, as far as, uh, you know, from the athletic point of view, I think, you know, I always kind of go back to uh, the toughest thing I did was running across America. Yeah. And the reason for that is you had to get up day after day and it's like uh, you stick your head out the door and you say, well, I got to go out and do another 60 miles today and I got to do it tomorrow. So, you know, 
wrapping your head around that and then actually doing it physically and, uh, you know, overcoming some obstacles along the way. Yeah. Plantar Probably, fasciitis. Yeah. You ran through plantar fasciitis. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you know, people might say, uh, you know, Mount Everest, you know, climbing that is that it was that the most dangerous. And I would say no, because I did a circumnavigation of Death Valley, which you were involved in part filming, filming part of that. So capture some of you know, that. You, yeah. Yeah, you always get involved with these, you know, wonderful things that. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, got to push it here too. Very leisurely. You know? yeah. yeah, I enjoy yeah. getting out there on the edge too. You know, it's, it's yeah, wind driven. Yeah. Um, so, so that was probably the most dangerous thing that I did. I don't know. I don't know. And um, let's see, and climbing Mount Everest, I think, uh, you know, that was probably the most technical thing that I did. And, you know, you had to wrap your head around, you know, lack of oxygen and other things like that. So I think it's those three, three things, but I think the most proud of is, is running across America because that, that was like a long ordeal. Yeah. 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 And everybody can, and yeah, you were there. Us. Yeah, I was there. Like I said, <laughs> four miles an hour. I've never seen so much corn in my life. Was whole way. <laughs> we yeah. Yeah. Corn out and there. I'll tell you what, they, they, they make great bathrooms, you know, the, the, the right, just the pop right in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go anywhere you want. I mean, it's the most, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. having That's, a portable porta potty. This you know, is, right? yeah, this is the real part of, you know, we'll say this is the real part of uh, sports too, especially ultra distance sports. When you got to go, you got to go sometimes. Yeah. Got to. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that part there and you know, people can, <laughs> people can figure it out. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I'd say we probably touched upon, you know, this, this, the situation or incident that, you know, changed your perspective on, you know, what you're capable of, what, what's your inspiration to others to, to, you know, just keep trying new things and keep pushing. Well, you, you know, I'll, I'll use running across America and, uh, as an example, and my daughter, Elaine, my oldest daughter, she said, a really interesting thing to me before I started, and it turned out to be true. And what she told me was, it's probably not going to look like you think it is, or, you know, play out like you think it will. And she was absolutely right. So I would say that to people who are out there, whether they're doing it for the first time or in the, you know, just starting hundred milers, now the new, you know, sexy thing is 200 mile races and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so that's great. But, uh, you know, when you get in the thick of things, you know, things can really turn ugly and, uh, you know, don't get discouraged, even if it's just training for something. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of thought and you got to have your heart in it. So, you know, don't don't uh, don't just put one foot in the water, jump in whole hog, uh, you know, anything that you can do, uh, you know, do it. And um, it will it will pan out one way or another even if you fail you can learn i always say you learn more from your failures than you do from your wins so uh don't get discouraged just keep out there knocking at awesome that's that's some great advice i know we all get a little discouraged sometimes but uh it's those who fight through marshall wow thank you um it's been a pleasure as always look forward to our next crazy adventure a couple years ago we ended up climbing a, a the tallest mountain in colorado that is in the winter in a driving uh wind and, and snowstorm which is an adventure uh so maybe we'll do it again sometime you know <laughs> um but thank you very much uh the the folks out there appreciate all your amazing wisdom and insight everybody out there stay driven and keep it rolling thank you very much marshall